welcome to all of you. It is, uh, it's an honor to be here uh, with uh, such an important group of people who are committed to the cause of opportunity, which is really what we do at the Department of Labor. We create opportunity. Uh, I want to recognize my good friend, uh, Governor Jack Markell. I was just thinking, I think it's nine years, almost nine years ago that we first uh, met each other. Uh, Jack Markell was uh, campaigning to be governor, and we were trying to get Barack Obama into the uh, White House, and we succeeded on both of those fronts. And we were just talking, I think we're both out of a job in about 11 months. So. Uh, <laughs> So we're here to understand skills and pipelines as well. Um, I, I want to give a special thanks to um, the educators in this room. The work that you do day in, day out is truly inspiring. And I want you to know that we at the Department of Labor, while we may not be at the beginning of the pipeline in terms of growing the pipeline, uh, our mission is really to expand it at the back end so that the opportunities that you're creating can help come to fruition. And as I said, our, our mission is really to make the American dream a reality for everyone. And you know, when I speak to groups like this, I often think about my parents who emigrated to this country about 60, 65 years ago. Uh, and they emigrated because they believed in this uh, very real but amorphous concept of the American dream. The idea that you could come to this country, you could get a good education, you could work hard, you could get a good job, raise a family, and, and save for your retirement. And, and that's what I believe in, and that's why I'm at the Department of Labor. And as all of you know all too well, that American dream is becoming harder and harder to achieve for far too many young people into our country. And it's appropriate that on the very first day on the job at the Department of Labor, I traveled with the president to Bladensburg High School, which is maybe about 10 miles away from here. And Bladensburg was the recipient of a brand new grant that the Department of Labor and Department of Education had come into called Youth Career Connect, which was trying to better align what is being happening, what's taught at the high school level with what the needs of industry. And that really has, uh, informed all of the work that I've been doing over the last couple of years. You know, we at the department believe that a child's zip code should not be his or her destiny. And so it is critical for all of us to invest in the dreams of the young people and build those programs and partnerships. And one of the things that we are trying to do to expand the pipeline at the back end uh, is around apprenticeships. And, and I know that when you think of apprenticeships, you think about the trades, you think about plumbing, you think about electricians, you think about uh, blue skilled professions. And, and I'm here to tell you that we think about the apprenticeships as not your father, not your grandfather's apprenticeships. And it's one of the reasons why the president has made a commitment to double the number of apprenticeships in five years. It's the reason why we recently put $175 million to create capacity. And, and I'm not certainly knocking those apprenticeships in the electrician plumbing trades. Uh, I'm thinking about those in high growth industry. Now, back in my day, we used to call them co-ops, we call them internships. But what we think about when we think about apprenticeships is a mix of on-the-job training, earn while you learn, with uh, in, in classroom education that helps you uh, move closer to either an associate's degree or a four-year degree. I think about people training for high growth professions like cyber professionals, cybersecurity professionals, uh, computer coders, pharmacy technicians, uh, healthcare professionals. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was in Chicago um, at Zurich Insurance, which is one of the major insurance companies in the world. Zurich Insurance is creating an apprenticeship program for their claims adjusters and for their underwriters. And I had the chance to meet some really inspirational young people who said, hey, I've always wanted to go into a white collar profession like this, but there was no path for me. And so at Zurich, uh, they spend three days a week uh, training. They work side by side with professionals, and they spend two days a week at a local community college, Harper Community College. Uh, at the end of the two-year process, they will have the associate's degree. They'll have the certifications they need. Um, they obviously have a guaranteed job should they do well at Zurich Insurance. That, to me, is a win-win-win for the education system. It's a win for the students, and it's certainly a win for industry as well. And we know this model works 
because other countries use this model. You know, uh, the Secretary, Secretary Perez and I spend a lot of time traveling. Uh, two of the places we go most frequently are Germany and Switzerland to talk about this. Now, in Switzerland, students as young as the age of 16 start making decisions about how they want to spend their careers. Now, just take a step back. Here in the United States, we don't even let a 16-year-old go to a movie without micromanaging how they get there, what they're going to see, and when they get back. And it's allowing kids to empower themselves to make decisions. And then once they make decisions, providing those opportunities along the way. And the reason they have a different mindset about apprenticeships in Switzerland is because they can look and see uh, leaders in government, leaders in business, leaders in all walks of life who want to start as apprenticeships. They understand that once you down, start down the road of the apprenticeship, there are many on-ramps on and off-ramps that allow you to come back and get a four-year degree, to start to become a supervisor, to look at different trades. And it's one of the reasons why is we think more and more about how we close this persistent skills gap that we have in this country. This is one of the ways that we know that can do it. We also are working closely with our colleagues at the Department of Education to ensure that there's a closer nexus between what industry needs and what high schools are teaching. So in Philadelphia, for instance, a partnership that we are supporting called the Urban Technology Project allows students to receive on hands, uh, hands-on learning opportunities and industry-recognized credentials. Uh, it really is a remarkable thing. Uh, they go there, they go to school, but they also train on how to be things like uh, uh, software technicians, um, how to be uh, IT program managers. And so they're learning while they're also uh, in high school. Um, South Carolina has a youth apprenticeship program for high schools uh, that has now expanded to 90 different programs around the state. And when we were down there recently, we were in Aiken, South Carolina. There's a company called MTU America, which is a, a giant uh, German company. Uh, and they're building engines for industrial and military use. And they've implemented a youth apprenticeship program uh, that allows, again, 16 to 18-year-old high school students to get valuable skills, get an education, uh, and get a good job. And what's fascinating about this is once they finish that, they get a certification uh, that says, hey, I am a trained professional in this field. And if they pass the equivalency of what is offered in Germany, they now have an int internationally recognized credential that they can take anywhere with them. So we in the United States are far behind this model. And I will concede, this doesn't solve all of our problems. It certainly doesn't expand the pipeline at the beginning, which I know many of you are thinking about. But it ensures that when you get these bright, um, motivated kids, there are real opportunities for them. Um, you know, the Blainsburg High School, the, the school that I visited on my first day at the Department of Labor with the president, um, is an is a interesting case study of how we're trying to transform um, this link between high school and industry. The grant that we provided to Blainsburg uh, allows them to partner with real employers like Lockheed Martin. And Lockheed is going into the high school and helping to de design the curriculums that match what Lockheed is looking for. And so the kids start to get this education when they're in high school. Um, they then have the potential of either continuing on through the local community colleges or moving to uh, places like the University of Maryland, Baltimore County, Rochester Institute of Technology, and they would have already gotten credit towards those degrees. And once they get out of those programs, they've then been linked to the industry jobs um, that Lockheed and others need. So it's really a fascinating, um, innovative model that we're trying to push around the country. Uh, I also know that as we think about high skills, as we think about uh, the folks that are most in need of training, um, I also know that there is a larger group of people that we need to serve. Um, I think about the uh, unfortunate incidents that have happened in Baltimore, in Ferguson over the last couple of years, in Detroit. Uh, and we understand that we have an obligation not only to serve the high need kids, but really all needs. And it's one of the reasons why uh, we are making such an investment around summer jobs. The uh, Department of Labor just announced $20 million of summer grants uh, around the country. As you may have seen, the president is now pushing a um, summer jobs initiative. Uh, he's asking um, cabinet members like my boss and others to post what their first job was. 
Um, uh, Secretary Perez's first job, I think, was at a golf course chasing down golf balls. Uh, if you look online, you will see the President talking about his first job uh, at Baskin Robbins and what he learned from that experience. Um, and so we know that often the path to a high-skilled professional job is just getting a foot in the door, and that's what summer jobs allow you to do. So in closing, uh, we are all in um, on the efforts that you all are trying to make. We understand the value of growing the pipeline. We understand the role of expanding opportunities. And we, more importantly, understand creating a closer nexus between educators and industry. You know, for far too long, we used to talk about our job training program in this country as train and pray. We trained people for jobs and prayed that they got them. Um, no more. Uh, it only works when we create this nexus, when we identify the needs of the workforce, when we are smart about how we educate and train our kids, and then we bring together those different entities and gatherings like this. And it's one of the reasons why I'm so honored to be here, and it's one of the reasons why I'm so grateful for the work that you all do. So please know that you have a partner in the Department of Labor. Thank you for having me.